Hey guys, hi, I'm Andrew Elliott. I'm with the Timberland Advertising Institute here in SMU. And I'm here tonight and I'm really excited to be here. This is my first ever portfolio night. And it's done by our students in the advertising program with the creative specialization. And as you walk around the room, you can see all the wonderful work that these students have put together. And they're here actually working with a lot of different agencies and other professors to get some feedback on all the great work that we are working with. So come and enjoy the show. So in this year's portfolio critique, that is the juniors, the first class in their creative track, I critique a lot of the work that's on the walls today. And I told two students that were in that room at the time that the quality of the work in th at this level, juniors, first portfolio class, was as good as seniors were three years ago. And, and that's, I, I'm, sure, I'm serious because I've been critiquing these classes for eight years. So I've seen this growth and they wanted to know why. And I said, I don't know, it's a little bit mojo. It's a little bit of a luck of a cohort comes in together and they just kind of link up. Right, right. And I've seen them where they don't link up. Yeah. More link up than don't and end up as friends long after they leave school. Right. And that's beautiful. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Okay. Very simple question. Of all the creative you see here, what caught your attention? Well, I like mine. I like seeing my campaign just blown up like big on the wall. So like that was like kind of the first thing I searched for when I walked into the room. And there, there's so much. It's uh, I'm an art direction guy. So perfect. You know, the design is, is what first probably attracts me and just the simple nature of the, the solution. I would probably say the the Scout's Honor grabbed my attention pretty quickly. Very simple idea, very well done, well art directed. Craft is top notch. But you know, there's so much work. That's but that's one that you know grabbed me pretty quite a, quite early. You know, as I was looking through, this, through things. What was the one piece of work that caught your attention? Um, honestly, the Scout in Honor. Um, first of all, I'm a big dog lover, so that may have you know got my attention, but. Um, just the subtle nuances of showing like a dog in your space and it not being in your face. I just thought it was it was very creative, using the furniture to highlight that. I look forward to coming to y'all's SMU's uh, uh, portfolio night. Last year I came and the stuff blew me away, all of it. That's and the great. same does here. SMU seems to do a higher level of, of product than a lot of the other schools around here and in other places. But the work is all at a very good level and very well thought out. There's a lot of, you see a lot of work put into it. The professionalism of the presentation itself, which really doesn't matter, although that's the end result. Right, it's great. Right. What's the one piece that caught your attention and why? The one piece. That's different. The students didn't make that I question. know, easy. I know. I would have to say it, it may be less popular, but for me, the H&R Block. H&R Block? Yes. Okay. That one was the one that caught my attention the most. Why is that? How did it catch your attention? It was the quickest kit, at least in my mind. There okay. was nothing that you saw in here that nearly came as close to it. It was a second life in that, and you got it right away. It was simple, it was quick, and it may not be the most buzzworthy one, but I think it would be one of the easiest gets execution from the people receiving on the end. It's very surreal uh, to be on the other end of these things. It's been a lot of fun to kind of go back and think about my time here and just how all the professors really poured into me and really gave me the push that I needed to succeed in this industry. And that's something I will forever be grateful for, and that is one of the many reasons that I'm back here at Portfolio Night, to just give back, but also take in what amazing stuff the students continue to make. Right. That's awesome. The one that has caught my attention, I think even previously from seeing this work from students, was the campaign over here with the Truth Babe. 
um, it actually really focused on the health effects of vaping and smoking and like cancer cause and lung issues and I thought it was you know fun the colors that they use the seeds that they use to like reference gum disease that is what caught my eye at the end of the day like I thought that was really cool Here we are with Spencer in front of his wonderful work here. Thank you. And I must applaud you, first of all, because I wrote down this quote from somebody that I really respect. And his quote was, the most impressive ad I've seen this week. And it's from students. And that's you. That means a lot. So that's pretty fantastic. Can you describe how you got to this point? Yeah, so like, um, as you can see, we do have all of our, our lovely fruit flavors here. Um, and we really wanted to target um, the fact that all of these vaping companies are coming up with not only their, their menthol and their regular tobacco style products, but they're, they're making these fruity flavors targeted at a younger audience. And so we wanted to make a way to, to almost mock at like how almost childish it seems that these companies are, are um, basically targeting towards children. So we wanted to make something that almost looked grossly delicious. Um, so as you can see here with our heart strawberry, uh, we wanted to focus on different um, illnesses or diseases or problems that vaping causes with the human body. So we wanted to combine the flavor of the strawberry um, with this picture of a heart here. But then you get the, the ominous uh, sort of message here with a uh, heart disease now in strawberry. And it's almost this like double entendre where it's like, oh, this looks enticing. But then you realize, oh no, <laughs> this is heart disease. We don't want heart disease. Um, kind of like the same way that these vapes are enticing at a younger audience. It's like, oh, it's fruity, it's nice, it must be good for you. But um, there's almost a duality where it's really not that nice for you. Uh, and so we wanted to make a kind of forced connection between the two. And so our first one that we came up with was the strawberry because you got the red color, you got the shape. And then we wanted to experience with some other, some other flavors. And we talked with a bunch of our classmates and people that we knew that had um, you know got hooked on vaping and asked what their their preferred flavors were so uh, we came up with watermelon and peach mango well, those were the two popular consensus that we wanted to target um, and so we kind of targeted those towards um, other problems that vaping causes mm. uh, like pulmonary, pulmonary hemorrhage if you don't know what that is look it up it's not fun it's a no. it's a lung issue um, which is very prominent with vaping as well as tongue cancer and so yeah those were some of the different things that we wanted to do and yeah that's how we came up with it great thank you perfect so of all the great work that you've had an opportunity to review here what is the one piece that caught your attention it's really hard to say but i think i really like the uh the fender uh guitar campaign okay. uh where you I thought that was really, really well done. It was excellent work, and I think it shows that uh, we've got good professors here at GAI. <laughs> but uh, great students. Yeah, I thought that was the one that stood out to me. Well, tell me the one piece that caught your attention. Well, we're actually standing in front of it. Uh, the Proof You Play, the Fender campaign up here. I personally play guitar, and I love singing and writing music. And there have been many a time when I found picks in my washing machine or my dryer, and I currently have calluses on my fingers, so the fingerprinting makes sense too. So I think it's something that really relates to people who actively play, and it's it's something that kind of pulls on those personal moments that... So it's fair to say it really resonated yes, to do that. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Super creative work here. We've got a lot of feedback, and it just resonated with a lot of people. So you guys did a fantastic job, but can you talk a little bit about how you came up with these concepts and how how that whole process worked yeah um, okay so this one here the fingerprint one was kind of a, the thumbnail that started it all we came in with a thumbnail sketch and it was just fingerprints and we like we had some little lines in it and then mark was like whoa this is this is a campaignable idea let's push forward from here and so with that we started uh, talking about more human truths that guitarists face and we wanted to just like kind of capture those in these photographs. Um, yeah, no, it was actually really funny. Um, 
Kaylin was close to not bringing in the thumbnail. I was like, oh, I don't know, but I'm so glad she did because obviously it worked out really well. And then we actually used my brother. He's an avid guitar player. So um, kind of interviewing him and getting some insights because this whole campaign, like we wanted to show like the proof you play without showing the actual guitar. So he was definitely really helpful in giving some more personal insights. But yeah, I'm super happy with how it turned out. It was a That's, lot of fun. What's been your favorite class so far during your time at the Timberland Advertising Institute? Honestly, production. Like, creative production? Creative production was really fun. We had our little bumps in the road at first, but it honestly was one of my, like, my favorite classes so far. And okay. I was really sad to see that. Yeah, creative production is great. I would also say concepting was probably one of my favorites, especially because it's just like the first time we were making student ads and campaigns and just learning the entire process about about it was kind of mind blowing and it, it was great. great learning experience. Of all the work that you've seen so far, what caught your attention? Uh, I was just telling Kim here that the Fender campaign I really enjoyed uh, not just because visually I think it th they put a lot of thought into every single execution I, I thought that was a nice touch usually student work you lose consistency sometimes when it's uh, a broader s spread of execution sometimes this set is better and then these two are kind of tagged on right, right. I felt that every single piece was thought through uh, I actually play guitars and I'm a lifelong Fender fan as well uh, so I really enjoyed it on that level as well, not thinking with my advertising brain at all. I just thought it was fun, and if I saw it, I would think, hey, that's badass. Right? The other one that I really loved was Resi. I, I think their use of playing with the name, your table is Resi. I love that as a copywriter. It's a little tongue-in-cheek, and I yeah, liked it. Yeah. Uh, I also thought the photography was great, the art direction. Uh, but those two really stood out to me. Okay, great. Thank you. What was the one piece of creative of all the wonderful stuff you see around this room that caught your attention? Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff, and really, some really cool graphic design work, but what caught my eye were the advertisements for Resi. And I think it might be because I'm an avid Resi user, but the, the copy on them, it, it resonated with me, and I loved it. process is repetitive and rigorous and repeating and re finessing and making stuff better and tighter, redoing, redoing, and they have lots of long, late nights. And they start to appreciate the rigor of that. And eventually what I hope happens is that they realize that's what they're going to be doing for their entire career. and that. Keeping the open brain and the open mind is really and truly um, the crux of being a good creative. Staying curious, always being willing to challenge whatever they're doing. Um, so yeah, it's fun to watch them develop over the years and I'm so proud. It's, this is just, it's overwhelming how much pride we have for the students. I think it's gotta be so hard to get some of that feedback and it's just like, oh, oh, that hurt, right? But right. I mean, I mean, is that a skill that it you, is, they have and to it, kind of develop? It's a thing too, we tell them to separate themselves from their work and that it's important that feedback is what makes them get better. Yeah. And so as it time goes on, they realize, first of all, they're gonna hear conflicting feedback. They're gonna talk to different, tonight, they're gonna talk to all these professionals and somebody's going to say, that's the best thing in your portfolio. The next person's going to say, that's the worst thing in your portfolio. And they're going to go, what? And that literally is what the real world is like. So part of this is also crafting their own sensibility, teaching them how to take feedback in and let some of it go if it doesn't stick. But yeah, that's uh, they have to develop a thick skin.